in a world beyond the brightest stars of the known galaxy. Twinkling lights hung in perfect symmetry across a great void of deep and beautiful starlight. The creator was there and the beginning of the world had happened many years before. The creator was always there, for constant he was, amidst even the swirling vortexes of dust which formed new stars to the tiniest little sliver of light in pool of shadow. And this void of stars is where the story of Aoa begins. Into a small and quiet recess of this world, four travelers have assembled. Starting the story, though, are three. A journey began with one fateful step. The world of Aoe is made of two continents. Their names are Nakir and Napaja. And amongst these continents is a place known as the Siri Gulch, a canyon 500 miles deep. Six miles at its shallowest point, and almost 11 miles down. And this place is very ancient, but was created due to a disaster which has befallen the land, called the Nurgul Magic Crisis. A strange and powerful phenomenon which has swept the world after a conquering army called the Orosed have come into the world. No one knows where they came from, but what they do know is the world will never be the same. And so, the story begins, a tale of three companions who go on a journey to find out why their world is falling to pieces, but at the same time discover new things about their world, mysterious, magical things might or might not have to do with the very universe itself. And so, dear listener, I give you the tale. Heroes of it. There is a town across the ocean on a larger island between the two continents of Napaja and Nakur. And it is called Maru. A place, a hub of ancient learning, discovery, and philosophical ideas. Famous for its palace of its high king, a man by the name of King Arcanin. He is a good king, and his subjects very much respect him. And so, heading to the city of Maru, the three travelers find themselves inside of the city. And that being, the C. Mark, the player characters, make their way to the gate, thronging to the arrival station in the south of the city, near a famous landmark known as King's Way Bridge, a grand stone structure equivalent to the greatest stone bridges planet Earth has ever built. Towering with its spires of ten lions, specifically lions with wings, statuettes, King's Weird Bridge is a place where people who want to make themselves a name within the history annals find themselves. Thronging people pass you on the streets as you guys wander, coming into the city after your tiring long journeys of beginning a trek into the unknowns for either pursuit of scholarship, your past, another mission, or something else entirely related to something personal to you. People are chatting. Oi! Look at my wares! Somebody's selling fish. Fished out of the very famous river that runs through the city, the Daishin River. Oi! Look at my clothing! Look at the gold on the collar of this beautiful tunic. Look at this sword! I hammered it myself with my strong arm forged to it. 
to withstand the mightiest of battles. Look at my geese! And the geese at her feet are honk, honk, honk into the city. Just a loud throng of people. Look at my chickens! I mean, my cochies! For in this world, chickens have a special place in people's hearts. Aaron has to do this because everybody else is doing it. Oi! Look at this booger! I pulled it out of my nose! Ah! Uh, says a man, passing in the room. Are you sure that's the wisest thing to be profiting on, young man? He says, as he wanders past. He's got a sheep following behind him, very fluffy looking one. He's got a large pair of white wings tucked on his back. Looks something like an Aesmar. Specifically, in definition, an Aesmar is a race who supposedly was descended from somewhere amongst the stars. Not much is known about them, other than the fact they look like either humans or elves and have large pairs of wings. But the more astonishing part is that he's gotten a very large, very woolly, um, fluffy looking sheep to follow him. And so he passes you. Chicken man can't take a joke. He seems too serious. A intent on some mission. The sheep goes <laughs> to you, chewing on some hay in its mouth. And it passes you. Little bell around its neck clanking and clanking. Yeah, right back away. at you. <laughs> Someone across the street says, I'll buy it! And it seems to be some sort of strange old person sitting on a stool. I'll buy your services, if you're selling. At least, I need an adventurer, he says. Oh. He leans on a staff, wearing a cloak of the finest material, except for his clothes underneath the cloak are very ragged. As if he received the cloak as charity or a good gift from a great lord who passed through the city. Oh, wait. You talking to me? Uh, who else would I be talking to? The old man says. Yeah, okay, whatever. What what you need? Well, he says, walking, pulling himself up by his staff and then walking over to you. I need somebody to keep an eye out. There's this old artifact, you see, in the museum. The artifacts. Museum. Or the Ark Society, they call it. The Artifact Restoration Construction Society. Or Ark, for short. Or Ark, because I don't want to say society every time. Oh, fine. He says, but you've got to respect them, he demands to you. But he smiles and sighs and says, Oh, you youngsters. Oh, you youngsters. He says, But this Ark Society has an artifact. You need to keep an eye on it. For if it's stolen, at the end of our livelihoods, us adventurers. For if the city does not trust adventurers, then we are dead. He says, The High King is very justice-oriented, and you will not escape with your life. I'm not threatening you. It's just the truth, he says. It's wartime, you know. And he says, go to the Ark Society. They will set you up with a good job. And they might even, well, give you some lodging or something for you wandering folk. But that is the end of my story. And he sits back down on his stool on the side of the road, pulls his cloak back over his hunched form, holds a staff in hand, and goes to stare out into space, humming some strange tune that goes something like So, he leaves you be, without even giving you his name. Okay, that was weird. As well on the street, pushing their way through the throngs of the crowd, two other travelers, not sure what they're doing, or the cloaked figure in the metaverse, watching all of this go down, who is your DM, does not know what is going on either. Would you care to inform us, other illustrious travelers? So, Howie, the water genasi character, is in the town shopping for a new staff. However, she realizes 
many of these staffs are far too expensive. Definitely be aware of that, because the cost on these things, in-world, the system used in the 5th edition of D&D is called gold pieces. Gold, platinum, silver, copper, and all of these have a specific value associated with them. Now, these staff are priced not in the gold range, which is a decent coinage that most people request, but in the platinum range. But this city is very well to do, and attracts adventurers, as I mentioned, from the world over. Specifically, strange that these things are so overpriced, but aren't they just hunks of wood, or are they something else? You looking at a staff, dear? This is an old lady behind one of the stalls counter in the market, busy market square that you find yourselves on. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. How did you know? Oh, long time in the city has led me to observing a few things about my customer base, she says. Now, you seem you've come a long, long way from your journey. I will sell you something for less than platinums. It just seems to attract the most attention of the most dignified people in this city. The Jerishon Warriors, to be precise, she says. Of the group who serves our High King as his grand protectors. Defending the people, governances of the High King, and those who might seek justice and love mercy. As great and mysterious People have undergone the training in the ways of their respective weapons for years. They say they have colored blood to denote what their ranking is, not in terms of the order of command, but their, well, I should say, mentor groups that they belong to, she says. But that alone none the lore of this city, she says. Do you want a staff? I've got one in the back. It will be ten gold, she says. And you check in your purse, and you have a starting for all of the travelers on this journey. 30 gold is your starting gold. Yes, I'll gladly take a staff. Could you tell me a little bit about what this staff does? Any spells it may carry? Yes, she says. She reaches into the back of her stall. It's a wooden frame structure with a beautifully painted roof. And pulls out a very simple looking staff, except for it's made out of white wood. And it has curling vine-like designs across its length. She says, on a consistent basis, it basically weaves starlight. She says, how that works is uh, every time you use it, it has charges of, it has ten charges of its magic. And it can cast dancing lights, she says. That does sound impressive. Good for illuminating small and dark spaces, she says. But once every ten days, she says, you can use it to illuminate a bright flash of light against enemies or in to illuminate your darkest of dark secrets that you may be exploring. Perfect for adventurers, she says. Ten gold. Only ten. So I have a hypothetical question. If I use this in a place obscured by magical darkness, will this illuminate through that? Oh my dear, you question the doubt of my craftsmanship? <laughs> no, no, I'm just asking to clarify. Well, she looks, and she seems to rummage behind her counter for a moment. And then she pulls out a book, flips through a few of the pages, and says, Ah! Oh, yes, 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 here! She says, and she reads, Good for the bright flash to penetrate through magical darkness. Dancing lights? Not so much. But that flight, bright, light, bright? Ah, oh, yes, my, I'm getting older, she says. It will be only able to do it once with the bright flash, once every ten days, she says. Otherwise, that darkness seems to take our 
toll on my poor magics, she says. I'll take it. <laughs> she she smiles at you and says, I know you would. Not many can resist a cheap staff like this. It's well made, but it will serve serve for cheaper purposes than platinum things that cast multitudes of spells. She says. She smiles though, and hands you the staff, but first of all, she says to you, There's leather that I'm gonna put on your staff to protect it here. On both the ends and the middle, so you may carry it with in comfort without getting a splinter. It is polished, but still. What color do you want, dearie? Color. Orange. And with that, she hands you this white wood and staff with vines twirling on it. They're carved into the wood. They're kind of raised bumps in the wood with their vines. And she hands you capped at both ends. It is capped in orange leather. And the uh, carrying spot where she recommends to hold it when in combat or exploring is also wrapped in an orange leather. And she has a little charm she's attached to it. Like a little metal thing. And the little metal charm is a unicorn. And it just hangs and kind of clinks off the staff quietly. But it has a nice little ping. Kind of vibrates like that. Awesome, thank you. Howie will take the staff and go on her merry way. People push into you from all sides, but no one seems to be trying to rob you, which is very odd. The city's very peaceful, or the city seems to be gripped by some sort of fear of the justice that might be doled out for thievery or some sort of lawlessness. Pushing through the crowd, the harpist with his sheep, Dumbles for a moment on a root from a large tree growing in the middle of the thoroughfare. There's two lanes, so there's two lanes in this street, and there's a large tree spiraling up towards the heavens, reaching its branches. Strangely enough, this tree does not have green leaves, it has purple leaves, and a thick, glossy black bark. And he trips over one of its roots and goes, Oh! Dairy me! But as he turns to look, the sheep notices another traveler. Bleh, says the sheep. Bell goes tink, 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 tink. And Vard and his sheep pass this other traveler who is... Yisang is just gonna look around the city trying to find other places of calligraphy in the city. Yisang looks at the realm around her and sees that there is a prominent, beautifully inscribed set of calligraphy on a door across the street from you. And the calligraphy seems to be scrawled in a language which looks like flowing water. Specifically, this language is known as Kanakin. It is the local language pretty much equivalent to what the 5e universe would call common. And she notices that there is a tall stranger wearing a dark colored leather apron and holding a very fine looking brush in their hand as they continue to write these words come all you are weary come and find your rest scrawled in the most beautiful handwriting that you can see but what's strange is this these letters seem to have an afterimage that floats on the breeze. Just a calming sense to them, as if they are magical. Or might be something even more. What do you want to do? Can I roll an arcana check? Absolutely. First rule of the podcast. I got a nine. Nine for an arcana check. Specifically in the realm of Yisei would be the fact that you do sense a strange sort of phenomenon, but it is not magic coming off these words. It seems that the very essence of these words has been breathed in life by whatever power is holding the world in its places. Most around here would say it is the creator god, folks, but there are other people who suspect otherwise. Most, though, do think this, and 
As far as most people can tell, this would be the case as well. But these words seem to give the person who reads them a sense of comfort. Even a longevity, not just a temporary feel. Do you want to walk over and find out what this man is doing? Yes, I will. Why, hello there, stranger. Or traveler, I should say. It's more respectful. What do you want with my words? Do you want to browse? Do you want to look at them? Do you want me to make you some? Do you want me to write down a passage from the Book of the Way for you? Or do you want me to teach you something? Well, she said, I'm some sort of a calligrapher myself, hailing from Urban City, and I was just wondering if I could improve or have, if you have some sort of tip you'd like to share with me. I. Oh, Bergen. Bergen City, you say? Bergen's in the north of here, in the uh, warmer lands, isn't it? He says. Yes, indeed. Well, you're in the right spot. You see, I could teach you a thing or two. What do you want to learn? How to do the proper calligraphy for the Kanakin language? Proper calligraphy for the Book of the Way? Or do you want me to just teach you how to make more beautiful words? I guess I'm interested in the latter two. The calligraphy of the way and just in general you are in luck the way the book of the way is written in the common tongue so every man woman child and otherwise may understand its contents the thing is though bringing about words as a commitment memorizing them bringing them close to the heart of those who read them is the first step to understanding them how I may recommend you doing this? Take some time to visit the Church of the Way and find out more about these words. For an understanding of is where they get written on your heart and written by your hand. He says, I cannot teach you much more other than the fact that it is a commitment you must make yourself. I can teach you what I know, but it is your choice to make. He says. That's perfectly fine with me. And pray tell, is this way the way of God? Yes. He says. The High King first learned of this way. When he encountered some travelers. They're called, well, these travelers were... From a place north of here, basically near the founding of our cities and kingdoms way back in the ancient days. And they followed the way of Vos, the creator, god of light, and everything within that realm. Even the shadows may fear him. And I promise you, this world has many shadows. But they fear him, all right. I can see it myself. And with that, you do realize his hands. The veins in his hands. Give me an insight check. I got a two. <laughs> the thing realizes that there is a strange color. You don't know what it means, but his veins are not a regular bluish purple of a um, humanoid. They have a bright golden color to them, and they look like golden branches underneath his skin. He smiles at you and says, I see you've noticed my veins. But for you to discover that is the case. Church of the Way? He points on his map. Now if you go north in the city, follow the road between the arrival station and the river, Along the bridge, the King's Way Bridge to be precise, is the Church of the Way, a large and beautifully constructed building. 
Okay, I guess she'll walk there then. But before that, sorry, I was like, mm -hmm. well, that vein seems very unusual. Hopefully, it'll, if it costs you any pain, it will go away soon. <laughs> the man laughs at you. I'm not laughing directly at you, but the concept that it causes me pain. No, in fact, it makes me feel more alive. My blood is this color. For a choice that I've made, as I said, you must make the choice. But it represents my commitment, my gifting by folks, for my journey. You have your own. Oh wait, my name is Matt, he says. Matt Calligrapher. That is my full name. Nice to meet you. My name is Yi Sang. Yes. Jung Yi Sang. It's spelled with an S A N G. I see, he says. Well, very lovely name indeed. I wish you all the best on your journey. And as as you speak with him, he hands you a sheet of paper but it has your name inscribed in the most beautiful flowing script. Looks like water, as I described it. Looks like waves. And he hands it to you and says, Folks, be with your journey. Here is your name, that you may remember. And with that, he bows to you in the cordial greeting and um, leaving, greeting and leaving you. He steps behind his counter in his little area he's been working in. And gets back to work on making this come, you who are weary, come and find your rest. And so, do you head towards the Church of the Way? Yes, she'll be making her way over there. Now, Aaron, what are you doing, first of all? And would you like to describe your character a bit more than the name Aaron? Yeah, he, he looks like an elf. He stands about the size of a normal elf. But he's already figured out he's not an elf. He has green green hair. A bunch of basically rags and furs and sticks and twigs <laughs> for popping out of his clothes. Some of them look like they were once part of a uniform, but he hasn't really kept up with it very very well uh he, he's carrying a spear just on tied to his back for good measure and he's kind of just wandering around because i don't think he's actually been in a city this big or grandiose before yeah. probably going to be making his way in or the arts, but I think he'd probably be looking at like, if there's a temple or church of some kind on the way there, he'd probably stop and take a look and see what's going on with that. Okay. Well, another passer by on the street, this one herding a flock of geese. A small child, to be precise. Blonde, colored hair, shimmering little brown eyes, and the biggest grin you can imagine. Oh, stranger, the child says. I mean, traveler. Gonk, 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 gonk. The geese make noise in the background. You looking for a place to go? Uh, well, I, I guess. What exactly are you up to? I am, I am herding geese. I think, yes. That's what mommy told me to do. You see, there's a brown goose, there's a white goose, there's a red goose. Where'd the red goose go? And I checked down and the, that goose has started eating a farmer who's selling their, like, cabbage-looking things down on the ground. Get away from that, bub! The goose honks and comes back to the group of geese. And there's about ten of them. And there's the yellow goose. Wait, 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 wait. And then the little child, like, dashes over. They're carrying, like, a 
little kind of a, looks like a stick. They're kind of like herding the geese with it, like tapping the ground with it. Kind of like, come on, come on, sort of thing. But specifically, they find this is, or you see, that this there's this golden goose in amongst the flock. <coughs> the goose goes at you, and then it hisses at the other geese. And the geese kind of go, like, step away from it. It seems to be the uh, in-charge goose. It fluffs up its feathers, marches right up to you, and starts pecking at your boot. If you're wearing a boot. Yeah, I, I am, I'm wearing a boot. I'm, <laughs> I'm not wearing a shirt, I am wearing a boot. <laughs> hey, what did I do to you? Ah, the goose says. Fluffs up its feathers and gets even fluffier somehow by means. It starts, uh pushing you down the street, or at least tries to. It, like, shoves its very, very, um, big head. It's a big goose. This thing is probably about to your knee. And it's pretty strong. It sloughs up these large wings and starts, like, pecking you. Hey, what did I ever do to you? Okay, Ah. he's gonna try to put his hand up to distract it and, and try to get it to either calm down or back off without resorting to violence. So I think that would probably qualify as an animal handling check. Yes, it would. How he sees this going down, is that right? Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, the way this thing's <laughs> behaving, I certainly hope so. Howie's gonna go over there and try to shoo the goose away. Hey, leave him alone. She, like, flashes her foot as if she's gonna kick him, you know? Kick the goose. She doesn't, but she's trying to get it to move. Yeah, Aaron's animal handling check was a 10. (laughs) The goose goose sees the other stranger step in, and the goose starts to get rather mad. It fluffs its, its feathers even more. And as this happens, the child turns from other geese who have now started to eat another farm stance uh, fruit um, and rushes over to the golden goose and says, Hey! You stop bothering travelers, you very, very not-so-smart goose. And the child grabs the goose and, like, full-on, full just, like, tackles the goose and drags the goose away from you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The child says, and gently shoves the goose back into the group of geese, then goes about it, hurting the geese with its, with their little staff. And the geese kind of go and waddle down the street further. But the goose, the golden one, turns and looks at Aaron again, blinks, he goes, as if it wants to have a second go at you later. Aaron blows him a raspberry. That goose, the goose, um, Seems a little bit. It got something out of that. Understanding it was a, it was sort of a rude thing to it, and it sticks out its goosey tongue at you. And then it just marches down the street, waddling away. But the child doesn't seem to <laughs> be any help to you after that circumstance. But I hate boys. <laughs> As this geese incident is going down, a young woman wearing a blue uniform that has a very stiff looking collar, an elegantly pressed, um, kind of quilted, quilted overcoat, and a pair of shining black boots walks up. She is human, has long, flowing red hair, and bright, gorgeous, deep, brown eyes. Puts a hand on her hip and says, Oi, you're looking for directions. Not geese. Apparently we'll give very good ones, she says. At least, not that I've heard of. I'm part of the city watch. Are you looking for something? She says. And you, Janassi, are you looking for something? She turns to Howie. I'm not looking for anything. I just saw someone in need of help. Yeah, thanks for that, by the way. 
Yeah, of course. Good to meet you. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm looking for something called an Arcs. Oh, the Ark Society, she says. The Ark Society, north of the city, across King's Way Bridge. But before you do, I'd recommend stopping in the Church of the Way. It's a beautiful, mysterious city. Landmark. And it's been here for thousands of years, she says. I would also recommend checking out the Folded Textile Emporium. At least that's my personal recommendation. They make the best, and I mean the best cloaks, she says. And with that, she says, follow me. And she says, if you want to get a good sense of the city, always ask the city watch. We're here to help, not here to harm. And she unsheathes a spear from her back. It was kind of like how you have yours on your back. And marches up the street, and she herds the geese herself. By the way, they've been very slow moving because they're trying to eat the rest of the farmer's stuff. She says, Child, get your geese back in line. They have a place to go, as do we. And with that, the geese part the ways, um, kind of get parked in an alleyway. Look over at Howie, see what Howie is about <laughs> going to do. Well, the Church of the Way sounds interesting now, doesn't it? Yeah, what way exactly is that? Um, well, that building seems to look like a church. How he turns towards nice, beautiful, tall building. And I, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sure you would like me to roll an insight check? Indeed. You want to explain how that works? Yeah. So insight helps you decide if you can determine true intentions of a creature or being able to know social cues. Like a church has a certain look to it oftentimes. So that can help with that. Let's see what I rolled. So you got a 12. Okay. You walk. Down the streets, tall, beautiful buildings on one side, and a glittering, very clean-looking river on the opposite side, on your right-hand side. The tall buildings are made out of stone. They have spiraling looks to them. So these are not, like, square, blocky-looking houses. These houses look like they're built in spires, starting with a larger, thick stone base and going up in a spiral shape till the points are high above the city, like points of um, sewing needles up in the sky. They look like they're spiral shells that you might find on the ocean seashore. And so as you are walking, people pass you and uh, the regular city hustle and bustle. But then you come to a square. A very large open space within the city. Pass you pass the King's Way Bridge. You see where it is. There's a second bridge though, banning the river. It's thin, tall, and doesn't resemble a spiral. Instead, it looks like a very tall building oriented towards the sky. It has four facets, like the facets of a jewel. As in, it is, um, the top of it is like a triangular shaped roof and has four spires at each of the corners of the roof, peeking up in sort of a elliptical shape, very finely crafted stone cut into ellipses. They look like an oval, but thinner. And the building has stained glass roof all the way along it, but it goes, it spans the river like an arch arched bridge but it has these large double doors in the center and then two sets of doors off to the sides of that large double door and all of them are open and a pair of steps running opposite each other lead up to the building so the stairs instead of being like one big group of stairs 
are two sets that are facing sideways built into the side of the wall. And it leads to a grand balcony looking entrance with carvings along the stone of what looks like birds, flowers, and a symbol of a seven pronged star with a cross in the middle of it. Like an X shape. Ah, oh, there's the beauty, says the city guard to you. I hope that this is the place that you wanted to check out. I'm here for my midday. Rest, she says. You see, the shade of the gardens at the back of this building are so wonderful, she says. And with that, she she smiles at you and says, Safe travels, travelers. And she walks away. They like to avoid traveler, don't they? They do. They do indeed. I also would agree. <laughs> How he says. <laughs> so do you go up into the building? Absolutely. Alrighty. Yeah, might as well. Meanwhile, for Yi Sang, you see the same thing that I've described to the two other travelers. Zephyr, you have made yourself walk up the steps already, and do you go into the building? Yes. Thank you for listening to Heroes of AOA Dungeon Mastery by Annalai Defenef. Howie Golkus, played by Sanguine. Jun Yi Song, played by Daniel. Aaron Cloudspark, played by myself, Neuron. Music provided by Tim Gallon. Purple Planet Music and Dark Fantasy Studio. Social media support by Assassin King 007 on Discord.